Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about the Madagascar hissing cockroach as a pet. I have one of my Madagascar hissing cockroaches here named Bean. I also have one next to me named um, Cobbler. She's a female. I'll show you her in a second. So a lot of people are kind of turned off by the idea of having a pet cockroach, but really they're a wonderful pet. So they're extremely docile. As you can see, he's just kind of chilling on my hand. They're extremely clean. Um, they clean themselves often and they also have little mites that live on them um, that's part of a symbiotic relationship. The hisser will give them a food source and the mites will keep them clean. They're also extremely easy and cheap to take care of, so you really only have to clean out their enclosure um, once every couple months really, or just when you think it needs it. They don't eat too much so there's not like a huge food budget, and they're also just pretty cheap to go and buy for your pet. They don't have wings, as you can see, no wings. And they cannot infest most places, it is too cold for them. Even if they do get out, they won't, uh, they may not live for very long, and they most certainly won't be able to breed in without the right conditions. They also can't bite, so you have no worry of getting bitten by these guys. And if you're worried about these little spikies, I know some people are, their legs are pretty spiky. Um, it doesn't hurt either, it just, I think it tickles a little bit. It, so you know, they make pretty wonderful pets in my opinion, especially for like someone who wants to start getting into more bugs and doesn't really know where to start, or to like have a classroom pet, or to introduce your kids to some oddities, you know. So their lifespan is about two to five years old. So they are also very social creatures. You should keep them in pairs. Um, if you don't want babies, you should keep pairs of males and pairs of females. If you don't mind babies, um, a boy and a girl would be just fine. And the way you can tell them apart is the males have those little humps. I don't know if you can see them. The male has these two humps right there on his head, and the female has more of a round head. So they have those little humps there, and they use those to combat for females, um, or just for dominance. Uh, now, if you do get females, they could have babies, and they have live birth, and they give birth to 50 to 60 young at a time. It's a lot of babies. Um, you would definitely need more of like a secure enclosure if you're doing that. Now if you just get a female, um, they can retain sperm and they can just reproduce without you having a male if they've ever interacted with the male. Alright, so another thing to keep in mind with these guys is that they are illegal in some places, so please make sure before you get them that they are illegal to keep in your area. Alright, so on to housing and actually taking care of your roach. So they can be housed in a plastic or a glass container. I keep mine in glass, uh, much like that back there. They can climb, so you need to be really careful. Um, you need to make sure you have a very secure lid or they can't escape. The size depends on how many you're keeping, so I keep one to two typically at a time. And I give them a lot of room, so I give them a 10 gallon. Um, I know they can be housed in smaller than that too. The one thing to keep in mind while you're housing them is you don't want them in direct sunlight. They do not like that. And you don't want them near like a draft. As for substrate, you want something like eco earth, cypress mulch would work, um, orchid bark would work, and just have enough in there to where they can kind of like bury themselves down if they want to. You want to decorate your enclosure with plenty of hides. Um, these guys really like cork bark and cork rounds. They like to hide in the uh, like tube of it. Um, regular just toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes also work. They like those a lot. Some people just do as little as like um, egg cartons for them to hide in and that does just fine. Um, you can use little huts, all of that. Um, and the rest of the decor is pretty much up to you. Just make sure they have plenty of room to hide and plenty of room to get away if they want. Alright, so let's go on to temps and humidity. So their temperature should be around 75 to 80. That's pretty comfortable for them. That's pretty um, ideal. You can go higher around 80 to 95 if you'd like. Um, they'll be a lot more active. There'll be more breeding behaviors, all of that. Below 70, they'll be pretty sluggish and in too cold of temperatures, they can uh, pass away. So you wanna make sure that you definitely have it warm enough. This room is pretty much 
warm enough for them. Um, it gets pretty hot in here. You can always use a heat mat. Just make sure that you use a thermostat. So their humidity is pretty important. It's around 60 to 70 percent. And to monitor this, you just use a hydrometer and you just mist them as needed, depending on your location, of course. So some people need to mist a couple times a day. Some people need to mist like once a week. I personally mist once every day. All right, and now on to their diet and what you should feed your Madagascar hissing cockroach. So they do really well on a diet of leafy greens, fruits and vegetables. They really like their leafy greens. They really don't eat much and you can feed them their fruit vegetable or their leafy greens about three times a week is what I do. Now the one thing they should always have in their enclosure to eat is some protein. So you can use cat or dog food like dry kibble. You can use ferret food. Um, you could also, I know people use fish flakes and even scrambled eggs if you want, just unseasoned scrambled eggs, not cooked in anything. All right, so for water, um, you can just use plain water. You can use water crystals. You can buy those on Amazon. You just basically hydrate these little crystals and it's just water. Um, you can also use bug gel. That's what I use because it's easier for me to get. Just make sure you're not going to use a sponge in your enclosure that can harbor tons of bacteria and it's really bad for your invertebrates. All right, guys. Well, that was pretty much it for today's video. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and you learned a little bit more about the Madagascar Hissing Cockroach. Um, I'm probably going to do more videos with them because I just think they are so interesting and they are so cool to learn about. Um, he's getting a little antsy, so I am going to go ahead and go put him home now. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!